Well, I'm really pleased to be here to present uh, Cordless 5. Um, this is clearly a two-year extension, uh, and uh, a lot of co-authors and a lot of hard work. Uh, disclosures relating to all of us. Uh, today's talk will be data-driven and on-label. Uh, I give a talk tomorrow which will be entirely off-label. Um, fair enough. Uh, the rate of contracture recurrence um, uh, after any treatment varies widely in the literature. Uh, after fasciotomy and aponeurotomy from 12 to 73 percent and after, excuse me, fasciectomy and aponeurotomy and uh, fasciotomy and aponeurotomy 33 to 100 percent. Differences in results uh, have been highlighted uh, for us by uh, Paul and co-workers regarding va variable reporting periods and variable definitions of recurrence. And one of the things that Larry and Marie have brought to us is a very strict and clear definition of uh, what, a, what a recurrence is. Um, cordless means what it says here. This is a pro prospective five-year follow-up study for patients who had received one or more CCH injections and one or more uh, post-treatment assessment in any of the five previous studies. So there's cord one, cord two, joint one, joint two, and there was a cord one extension study. They have had annual reevaluations re starting two years after collagenase uh, to assess safety and evidence of recurrence. Um, year three recurrence was 35% for all joints, um, and you see the numbers there. So these are the definitions I'm going to work with. Successfully treated joint, uh, according to uh, um, Hurst and Badalamente criteria, is zero to five degrees within 30 days. Measurably improved joint is reduction of contracture by 20 degrees or more. Recurrence after successful correction, <coughs> I apologize, I'm on the end of a cold, uh, is a contracture increase of 20 degrees or more and a palpable cord, or if the joint had any secondary intervention, medical or surgical treatment. So recurrence is those two things. A non-durable response is the same as recurrence, but it's for joints where only partial correction was achieved. In other words, you have a recurrence after successful treatment from zero to five, but you would have a non-durable response if you had a recurrence, if you never get out fully straight. We also did a post hoc analysis uh, to 30 degrees, which is the more commonly reported figure when there's a strict report in the published literature. So this is for historical comparison. Uh, these are the, uh, the data. There were 950 eligible patients uh, who were enrolled with over 1,000 joints. Um, patients uh, who received, the eligible patients had received an injection. Um, the joints had received three or less injections. There were a couple of people who had to be excluded because erroneously they actually got more than three injections. Um, successfully treated and measurably improved joints are listed here. And in addition, there were 156, so about 12% uh, who were not effectively treated. And you see that on the bottom. The year five recurrence rates of successfully treated joints. So green is 20 degree contracture recurrence. Uh, orange is 30 degrees. All joints, 47 and 32. MP joints 40 and 26, PIP joints 66 and 46 at five years. A recurrence of 20 degrees or more, looking at the pre-treatment contracture severity, uh, where, one, uh, where the MP joints were considered low severity at 50 or less, and the PIP joints were low severity at 40 or less. And as you can see, um, the MP joints are, are counterintuitive. The high severity joints seem to do better or did do better according to the records here. Maybe we need an even larger study. Um, but in the PIP joints, it makes sense that the higher severity joints have a, 51 of them have a uh, higher recurrence rate. 
later on. Greater than 20 degrees recurrence over five years in successfully treated joints. And thank you, Wolfgang, this is what you were talking about. The recurrence increase in years two to three was 15%, and then it drops to 7% in the next year, and I'm sorry I put the 5% in the wrong place, but it's a 5% increase. So it seems to flatten out. If you're going to get a recurrence, most people tend to recur in the two to three year range, at least according to these data. Um, looking just at MP joints, uh, again, it's, it's higher in year two to three than in three to four and four to five. Um, PIP joints, same trend, flattens out as you get out towards five years. And this is kind of everything that was ever done for joints that needed additional treatment. Um, we've, uh, we're very pleased to report this will appear in the American Journal of Hand Surgery uh, sometime in the next several months. And this table is worth uh, studying. Uh, collagenase retreatment is the, is the uh, bar in, in green. It's very low in year two, uh, wasn't released commercially, wasn't largely available, and there were other treatments, um, including an unknown. Safety and adverse events. Um, there were uh, 365 or 57% with adverse events, and according to FD, uh, the FDA, swelling is an adverse event. So um, one adverse event, interestingly, was a decrease in circumference. Uh, Paul, as you gave your paper on thumb web space and it got better, I wonder if the circumference decreased and it was just a greater distance from skin to skin measurement. Could be. Uh, there were 181 serious adverse events, but none were treatment related. They included um, car accidents, broken bones. That, it has to be reported, so they were there. There were no allergic reactions, and this study does not include the group of patients that Dr. Pess has uh, shared with us. However, the possibility of an allergic reaction to this as well as any other drug has to be considered and appropriate resuscitative equipment ought to be kept in the office. One tendon rupture was reported in this series. There were three in the cr clinical trials. There have been 26 worldwide that have been reported, one A2 pulley injury and one which is a ligament injury and I don't have more information on that. And at the point that these data were calculated before Gary's, there were about 50,000 cases. All of the tendon ruptures reported that I know about related to this series and retrievable events were late. That is to say they were in the first 30 days, but not at manipulation. Conclusions. Uh, recurrence overall. If you use the 20, when you use the 20 degree criteria, it's 47%. When you use the 30 degree criteria, it's 32%. PIP joints that start out with less severe contractures do better. 84% of successfully treated joints had no additional treatment, which is encouraging that people don't come back with a deformity. Uh, that requires treatment. Retreatment with uh, CCH was more common than fasciectomy once it became available commercially, and there were no serious long-term risks identified. Thank you for your attention. I'm really honored. Thank you.